So, Newegg built a new website to compete with PC Part Picker. Did they build something worthy of your time? We find out right now on Roby Tech. What's up guys? My name is Justin Roby, I'm the host of Roby Tech and welcome to the show. Today, we're taking a look at something new. Uh, relatively new. I've been a part of helping Newegg build this PC builder now for a while, and they just released their beta version about a week ago. In fact, I think one of the things that I like the most about this whole thing is that the uh, is that Newegg is giving you, the PC enthusiast, the opportunity to jump in here and help them make something truly awesome. Now, the thing that we're talking about is we're talking about a direct competitor for the first time to PC Part Picker, which has kind of been the bread and butter for most of us when it comes to building PCs. Now, when you think about it, I don't know, I probably have built, I don't know, over a hundred PCs on PC Part Picker, including getting to share images and all those other things. One thing is you don't get with Newegg's PC Builder is you don't get the option to look at the price across multiple different websites, like for instance, Amazon, b &H, and Newegg. With Newegg, you're literally just looking at Newegg. So when they thought about building this for the first time, they had to think about how they could one up that whole experience when you're building for the first time. So let's take a look here it is right here. This is the new egg PC builder. And like I said, it is in beta. Now, when you first launch a PC builder, one of the things that you see is you see a budget, a mainstream and an enthusiast option that you can customize, or you can just go right in and start from the beginning. The cool thing about having this budget mainstream or enthusiast is that it kind of sets a budget and then it puts together a bunch of parts that are constantly updated for you to go and start customizing. So if you've never built a PC before, you have a template to begin with. This is something that's different than what you might see. The way that you do this on PC part picker is that you choose like a 1K build or something that another person has submitted, but these are curated from the team at Newegg themselves. When you build something on the Newegg PC Builder, the one thing you'll notice is that it uses what's called a GUI interface or graphic user interface. This is making it a lot easier for you to step through the process. So why don't we build a PC and then I'll give you my opinions and tell you a little bit about what's happening in the background to help you understand why building on something like this might be a confidence booster. As I say, there are still bugs to be found, but they are working on a lot of them. And at the very end of the video, I've actually got a bunch of things that Newegg has sent me to let me know the things that are being modified and fixed in the coming days or in the coming day or weeks that should make this, this, this tool even better as we go through here. So click on CPU. We're opening it up right now. And here we go, opening our CPU. And you can see we have a ton of different options here. And right now it's got, it's actually got a PC that I've built over here on the right. So over here on the right, you can see all the different components that I've selected previously. But here you can see it's basically saying, hey, these are probably the most popular and usually the highest rated. One of the things that we have seen early on is that uh, one of the bits of feedback they had really early on was the sorting for this stuff. Obviously now it seems like they've, they've kind of sorted by popularity, but then there's these random things like the Ryzen 3 3200G, like why is that number two on the list? With money being no object, let's try and see if we can build something around the $3,000 mark. So let's, let's of course select our uh, Ryzen 9 3600X. Now, the cool thing is, is that you can hit change to a new item. Again, we've already got a build here, kind of set up, but we're gonna go ahead and change to a new item. And you can see that things start to kind of fill out here. And again, you see this my new list. The cool thing about this is that you can also see that I've got stuff like, it shows me how many parts I have selected, what the wattage estimate is, what the total cost is. And then again, you can easily share your list, which is actually pretty neat. And remember guys, if you actually wanna check this out, I'll have a link in the description below. You can check all this out on your own. I'd love to know in the comments what you think of this entire tool. So we've got our CPU. Let's go ahead and take a look at our motherboard. And the cool thing is, is that you can click on anything in here. You can get an overview, specifications, you can view product details. Oh, like see stuff like this. Like we're already seeing a couple little bugs here. Um, but you can also click on view product details and it'll actually load the entire page. So it makes it really easy. One of the things that uh, I also like is that it's opening new tabs versus trying to open a bunch of windows. So if we go here, well, why don't we do this? Let's go ahead and clear all these out. We're gonna go ahead and just delete all this stuff real quick and clear out and just build it from here instead of using an older build. Okay, so we've got our CPU chosen. Now let's go ahead and select our motherboard. The cool thing about the PC builder is that once you've chosen your CPU, it'll actually only give you motherboards that are based, that will actually fit your 
current CPU choices. So again, you can see it's got B450, X570. Uh, let's see, I, is there a B550? Yeah, there's B550s in stock. I mean, B550s that are actually available, you see out of stock. And over here on the left, you can see that you can do things like sort by stuff that's on sale, sort by things that are actually out of stock. And again, some of the feedback they've actually gotten, like for instance, the out of stock thing and making sure that that's, that's actually more to the top is things that they've already modified based on the feedback that they've gotten during their beta time. Now, the cool thing about this is if you check this out, like right now it's saying, oh, here's all these motherboards and there's not a ton that are currently in stock, but I can go over here and I could say, if I select my case, we're gonna to go to our case real quick and we can go down here and we can say, let's do micro ATX. So apply that filter. So we've got our micro ATX things and let's say for instance, let's choose something that we know has pretty good airflow. So here you go, Cooler Master, MasterBot Q300L, pretty good airflow, we'll add some fans to it later. But now we've got a micro ATX, micro ATX in there. Now, if we go to our motherboards and we click on this, now notice, the only options we have are all micro ATX. So again, even if you skip down the list, the cool thing is, is it says, oh, now you're all, I'm only gonna show you things that are compatible with what you've actually selected, which is pretty awesome and builds a lot of confidence for people who've never built PCs before. They are literally going through their entire catalog and making sure that there's a lot of compatibility in this. You think about compatibility, you think about B450, B550, you gotta worry about things like how much RAM slots they have, how much RAM, like what, top RAM speed, all of these different things were all things that I even mentioned at the very beginning to make sure that as they deal with the algorithm for choosing compatibility, that they make sure that they hit all of this stuff. So making sure that you can feel really confident in the end, just hit add all of that to cart and walk away with something that you know that's gonna work. Now, instead of finding something that's like compatible and like going down micro decks, knowing that we don't have a ton of options in stock, let's see if we build something that's actually a little bit more Dream PC. So let's go down to case here. Instead of choosing micro TX, I was just kind of showing you what compatibility looked like. Let's go ahead and build a full tower, uh, mid tower, and we'll do something, let's choose something that has good airflow. Um, so let's look for the Fantex P400A, which we know is a great case. So there we go. We got the Eclipse and let's look for here. We'll do P400 and there it is. And then the P400 is totally fine. It's got the good options and we'll just choose it in there. And we're gonna change to the new item. And again, now the algorithm is setting it all up to make sure that we're in good shape. So now if we go and choose a motherboard, oh, look at this. We have a lot more options and let's go ahead and choose X570, which is a little bit more prevalent. Well, it's a higher end. Oh, there we go. Ooh, that's pricey though. Um, mm, let's do the ASRock X570. So we'll do the Phantom Gaming 4S. Ah, this is a 3900X though, you know? It's like, you gotta do something. We might as well just go, let's go all in. We'll do the Steel Legend. That's a little bit safer. We know that VRM is pretty good and we got some good overclocking potential there. Okay, so now we've got our, we've got our uh, ASRock X570 Steel. We've got our 3900X. We now know that both because of form factor and everything else that it's all going to work. So now we're gonna go ahead and choose our memory. Okay, so looking at our memory, we've got a bunch of different options here. And again, memory, knowing what we know about memory, memory for the most part, really what we're looking for for cast latency, cast latency, CL. And you can see that that's one of the primary things right there at the top is you can see, hey, I've got cast latency. Uh, you can look at your speed. And again, it's recommending here, right here at the top. It's like, oh, this is 81 bucks. It's got DDR3600. And again, we wanna, we want, let's fill all four of our slots. And why not, let's make sure. So why don't we look at, we'll look at G-Skill. Um, we'll look at CL16, which is gonna be great. We definitely want a dual channel kit. And let's see here, we'll do DR, we'll do DDR4 3600, which is ideal for um, our Ryzen CPU. Okay, so here we go, we got some 32. And let's fill all four of those slots. So let's see, what do we have a four by, there's a four by eight G-Skill Triton Z uh, 3600, that's great. There we go, got that in there. And now we have all four of our slots. And again, it's looking and knowing, it's looking and knowing, hey, these are things that are definitely going to work. Okay, one thing I almost forgot about right here is uh, the ability to sort. So we we're talking about cast latency here. You can actually sort by cast latency. So you can sit there and you can, here we go. We have it set to 19, we set to 14. And I was talking about, hey, I'm trying to find, you know, four sticks. Uh, to, to fill up all the modules like I had before. You can actually sort by module number. So here's 64 gigs at four by 16. You can look at color, speed, all that sort of stuff. And these, uh, the ability to sort is actually a huge part of being able to find parts easily, including, you know, like, okay, well, what's the cheapest I can get? Now, I'm gonna talk about things that they're, they're improving later on. One of those things is 
the fact that right now the sort is actually only per this page. Uh, here very shortly, um, when you sort, you'll actually sort across the entire search criteria. So that way, like if there's something that's hidden back here on like page seven, that'll also sort to the top as you're looking for specific things. So another big part of helping you and um, a cool, neat little uh, uh, trick that you can use when you're actually building and using this tool for the first time. The best thing about this is the other thing that it keeps into account when we choose GPUs is it knows how long, how long of a GPU and how thick of a GPU we know we can fit in the case. So we're only getting recommendations here for GPUs that actually know that we fit inside of the P400. Now, given that we got a 3900X, we want to make sure that we're using a 38, uh, sorry, a 2080 at least. But let's 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 not go too crazy. Let's go ahead and do a 2080 Super. That feels good, and probably something from EVGA or ASUS. Seem good to you guys? You feeling pretty good about this? So we got good options there. We got EVGA. We've got the G, the Super video card. Um, we got some stuff from EV, some stuff from MSI. We want something that's, that looks like pretty good. There we go, right there. The Gigabyte Aorus GeForce RTX 20, 2080 Super. Love the look of that card, and it looks super good. Um, and we got that in there. Ooh, wait a minute. What do we got? Ooh, yeah, and, and it's got our yeah, We got RGB in there. We got we, so again. Overall, spent 800, 1820 bucks. We can share this at any point in time. And you can see right here, not only do you not only do you see what you selected, but you actually get a pretty good view on the right-hand side of what it is that you actually chose. So now next up, we're gonna go ahead and choose a power supply. And again, it's taking into the fact that we're already using 460 watts. So we're getting 650 watt, uh, 650 watt, 750 watt. Again, noticing that we're actually getting PSU recommendations for power supplies that we know are going to work with our, our GPU, CPU combination. Um, wanna make sure we choose something good. So we got some Fantex. We got the Revolt. That's a little crazy. That's a thousand watt, but we know that'll definitely work. Um, why don't we do an EVGA? I know I'm guessing that the Corsair ones are probably pretty low on stock. And we want, you know, given that we're using a, we're using a 3900X, we probably wanna make sure that's gold certified. So let's, let's filter by that. And up we have, oh, there it is right there. The 750, we'll do the 750X, which is more than enough power. And we're cooking with gas. So now we go to storage. And the cool thing about this is we're gonna get a nice little pop up here. Let's you know if you wanna do a hard drive or an SSD, and you can always go back. We're gonna go and choose SSD. And then this is where you can get your options for your M.2s. And remember, whew, Check this out, it says, oh, you know that you've got PCIe 4. So right there at the top, we've got the MP600, which is a PCIe 4 uh, M.2 drive. And then of course over here, we can shoot, we're gonna go ahead and filter by M.2. Uh, we're gonna want, you know, we're, we're gonna want a couple, a couple in here, but let's go ahead and just choose like a nice, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, let's choose that one terabyte. Let's do a one terabyte, yeah, that seems pretty good. One terabyte PCIe 4. And you, and you notice the option here, it's like if I wanted to, if you're like, okay, I've got a one terabyte here, but you, you got it in there, you actually could see and it'll add an additional. So we can choose another SSD. Let's throw a 500 gig. Why not? It's not real money. Nothing's real money. Okay, so we'll throw, well, let's, let's PCIe at four. We've got X570, so we got PCIe four on all channels. And again, it'll let you add an additional uh, if you wanted to. Um, look, but now we've got our, we've got, we've got uh, one and a half terabytes of M.2 space. Of course, we could also, it'll add drives because it knows how many physical drives and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm now going in there and I'm like, okay, I've got my 3900X and let's, uh, let's choose a new case. Still want Fantex, but you know what? Let's, let's choose something a little bit more on the upper end. So I'm a huge fan of the P600S. Again, you can open all the, open all it up, get a not good at airflow. So let's go and choose our P600S there. Um, change to new. Now check this out. When I go back to my CPU cooler and I select that, now I get the option. Do I want fan or heat sink or do I want a water cooled kit? And of course I've got a 3900X. Of course I want to water cool this thing. So now we get a bunch of options. We can look at ratings. Um, it's telling you your fan RPM, how much noise you're looking at. Um, of course, we're gonna choose something that we know is gonna be overall very, very quality. So let's go ahead and choose our Corsair um, over our H100, which is always one of my favorites. Throw that in there and I'm feeling pretty good. And then the last thing, of course, is our operating system. And we'll throw a Windows 10 Pro in there. And boom, just like that, we now have an entire list built. Now, with this, not only do we have the entire list built, you can actually hit just save that list. And now you've got it saved to your main page. Um, you can edit the name of the list here. So we can actually call it, we're just gonna say it, Roby Tech, Roby Tech 
YouTube PC. Uh, hit update that, and then of course you can now, once you've updated that, you've, you've seen you've got, a, you've got a link here that you can share it to. If you've used this and you find issues, one of the great things, and I've talked a little bit about this as we've been building, the, actually as we've been doing the video, that they've been taking feedback. And one of the things that was super great, and I push for this obviously as somebody who cares a lot about customer feedback, is this button right here that says, how, we, how can we improve? So if you find something that doesn't work or you find something that actually is compatible that it's not letting you choose, you can just click on this, how can we improve? You can see they actually have a whole survey here that actually lets you give feedback on the entire tool that they're consistently improving. Feedback is important to them. And one of the things I talked about earlier on was just how they have improved this over time. So they actually have a ton of fixes in the pipeline that they're gonna be releasing over the next couple of weeks. Things like it will now show out of stock items and we're gonna add the ability to actually add that item uh, coming on 629. How you can improve button now has a survey that users will be able to fill out. So more than just the what you like, there will actually be a full survey. So if you really wanna get detailed feedback, you'll have the option there, which there, the number of, the amount of feedback they've gotten has been so important in terms of shaping the tool, which I think is awesome. Number of RAM sticks and DIMM slots is now, is gonna be fixed. So like you can basically, it'll it'll basically make sure that it's giving the right recommendations. Incompatible product should be all gone. They've been weeding through it for a while, but they're making sure that that's being taken care of. Options to filter by on sale, in stock, and ship by Newegg, which I think we've actually seen some of those buttons already even today, but those have, they those are being added. The current sort function only sorts the items on the page you're looking at, not all pages of items. So that's being fixed. So when you hit sort, it'll actually go across all pages and make sure that it's sorted versus just the page you're on. There's gonna be more sorting options. Uh, they'll be showing a non-compatible warning. So like say for instance, you add multiple hard drives or multiple SSDs, the builder will allow you to option add as many as you want, but it'll throw a warning that says, hey, this may be incompatible. They'll also be adding new categories for things like that's already on PC Part Picker. So if you want to add monitor, you want a keyboard, that'll also be going in there. You're also going to be have the ability to add uh, sorting by total RAM instead of just module RAM gigabyte. And then finally, they're actually going to be updating the overall logo because I guess they had some feedback on that. They're modifying it. They're making it better. How does it stack up though? How does it stack up? What do you guys think about using the tool? I'd love you to actually go check it out and then go check out PC Part Picker. My general impression is I love the GUI interface and I really love the work that they've done to try and make sure that it sorts across and works across the entire catalog of Newegg. But where we see limitations is again, Newegg is only just one place, right? And so when you're talking about, when you check over on PC Part Picker, you've got, you know, you can check in stock at B&H, at Newegg, at Walmart, at Best Buy, also over at Newegg. I mean, that stuff's already there, right? And so when you're trying to find the cheapest, they may not be the cheapest. So where they're trying to make sure that they're coming out on top is that they make sure that you're absolutely sure it's compatible. What did you think of the Newegg PC Builder? Would you like to give feedback? Did you like the tool? What did you think it was in terms of comparing that versus PC Part Picker? Did you feel confident after you built your PC build that you were sure it was gonna work. I'd love to know all of that stuff in the comments below. And while you're down there, make sure that you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you can get a notification each and every time we upload a new video. Also be sure to check out our live show every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, starting at 6.30 p.m. over on Twitch and YouTube. Guys, this has been absolutely awesome. It's actually cool to see something that's competing against PC Part Picker. It's been a long-standing tool within our within our tool bag, but it's cool to actually have additional options. Well, I'm gonna go build some PCs. Maybe you should too.